Today we're going to be talking about how you can create a user persona for your UI UX design process. But before that, what is user research and what is the key goal out of user research? As a UI UX designer, your main purpose is to really understand the user and to create the user interface design for that particular user. And before you even know what to design, you're going to have to understand that user very, very well. So that's what user research is for. The key goal out of user research is to know everything about the target user that you're designing for. This means understanding your competitors in the market, understanding the users themselves, understanding what their wants are, their pain points, and all of that. And there are various methods which you can do user research in order to achieve that goal. But one really effective method is user personas. So what is user persona? It is basically a fictional representation or archetype of your ideal customer. I'm going to give a very, very brief example again with a music player application. Let's say you are designing a music player app for people who love classical music. Then you would have to think about who are the users who are going to be using this application. It's most likely music lovers. But as you think about this ideal customer, this music lover, you're going to dive deeper and think a lot more about who this user is. Music is one thing, but since it's a classical music app, it's probably going to be a classical music lover. You can start to think more about their gender, their age, what their likes are, their dislikes, what kind of background they have and all of these things and you realize that as you are coming up with this fictional character or this user persona you are already starting to empathize and think a lot more about this user and all that information is going to be very helpful when you start to actually design something for the product so that is essentially what a user persona is and why it's so important and once again it's really important because it helps you build empathy which is an integral part of the ui ux design process now that you know what a user persona is, how exactly does it look like? What do you add into this user persona? You might have seen a lot of these on case studies in portfolios, but now I'm going to walk you through an example of one that I've created in the past, and I'll be talking a bit about what are some essential parts that make up a really effective user persona. So let's jump right into it. For the example, I'll be going through this project, which I did some time ago. It's called SoMe, which is a short form for social media, and you'll see why in a bit. This is the background for the project. This product serves to give influencers and content creators a way to track their growth, as well as learn and find opportunities to grow more on their social media platforms. For some, social media platforms could be their main source of income. Hence, in this project, I designed a website with a dashboard that helps consolidate all social media accounts belonging to an individual, allowing them to track their growth on each platform. Essentially, it's a software as a service and it's targeting social media influencers and content creators. With that bare idea in mind, I started the user research process, of course. I employed various methods, for example, user journey, which I have a video about. You can check it out. And of course, in this video, I want to talk a bit more about the user personas. I created two user personas, but usually one is enough and one is optimal because you want to just focus on one specific user group. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of giving more examples, I have two in this project. The first example is the rising nano influencer. An image is irrelevant, but it's always nice to kind of imagine what this person might look like for fun. You can also make it a bit more realistic by coming up with a name, age, location. These things are more important. For example, age, location, and occupation, student, content creator. I think these are the more important things. Also, you can come up with a little short introduction or bio for the person. For Rachel, the bio says that she's matriculated into university and has been vlogging her university experience. Besides lifestyle videos on her student life, she also creates fashion and beauty content. To date, she has collaborated with multiple e-commerce and fashion brands. This is just a short introduction into Rachel, which could be a rising nano influencer and a potential user of SoMe or this platform that we're designing. Another important part of a user persona would be the wants and needs. As I'm putting myself into the shoes of someone like Rachel, I'm thinking about what she could possibly want or need from such a platform that we're designing. So if she's making money online or if she's looking for ways to grow her social media following and online presence, what features would be needed in this platform? What would she want to see? And all of these things you can really brainstorm in this user persona method as well. And a lot of these could also come up from the bio that you're writing. So for example, if I did not write her bio, I would have not thought about the situation that she's in. 
So right now, her scenario or her situation is that she's collaborated with multiple brands already, and she just wants to grow. And she also does this specific type of content from there. I can also ideate more about her wants and needs and thus ideate more design solutions in the next step. Also, I can think about some social media platforms that she's on just because it's very relevant to this project. That brings me to the next point that actually a user persona, there is no fixed template. I would say the main things is, of course, gender, age, occupation, and also her wants her needs and the pain points and frustrations is probably the most important part of the user persona because this is where you think about what are the current issues that someone like Rachel currently faces and based on those pain points, based on those gaps, based on those issues that she faces, you can really design your product or your solution to target or address those pain points or to be a lot better than whatever is currently out there. I did a similar one for a more seasoned socialite. This is Brandon, 827, different location, but similar occupation, except he's not a student. He's actually an entrepreneur because he has his own merchandise, if I remember correctly. Yes, he has his own brand and sells merchandise and is more concerned about business. So from this bio, I also think about the wants and needs that such a socialite may have and also think about the pain points and frustrations. From all of these findings and all of this empathy over here, you can go on to really design a wireframe or low fidelity prototype that has all the different features which you've ideated from all the user research that you've done. That is that for user persona. This is what I normally do. But of course, if you do a simple Google search, you'll see that there are many different ways to present this information. Sometimes people like to also include the personality of the user. For example, for a socialite, for an influencer, different personalities they could have is like creative, fun, outgoing, business-minded, things like that. All these different traits and personalities can also really help you understand the user that you're designing for a lot better. So some examples, as you can see here, they also add other things which can be very helpful as well. For example, let's look at this one, which is very similar. It has a similar layout to the one that I did, and it has the key features as well, the key elements such as the bio, personality, motivations, preferred channels, the brands, the frustrations, especially, as well as the goals, age, occupation, location, and different personality traits. And of course, a short little quotation here. You can definitely do something like this as well. But as I mentioned, the main parts to take note of would be the bio, the wants and needs, and the pain points and frustrations, as well as their age, location, occupation, gender, which I guess would be included in the image and the name that you come up with for the person. I hope that example was really helpful and you understand a bit more about what a user persona is and how to create one for your next UI UX design project. That's all for this video. Stay tuned to Nomad Me because we'll be posting a lot more videos about UI UX design and freelancing. And I'll see you in the next video.